So the divine image. Um, before we talk about this, is a final poem in the collection of songs of experience, and it was a, a poem that was actually added a year after the collection was written. Uh, now, if we think about Blake as a whole, if we think about uh, Blake's writing, and and Blake's writing is full of contrary ideas. It's full of uh, con um, kind of like oppositions. Uh, some of them fairly binary, and he warns us of uh, certain issues that exist uh, with these uh, contraries. So uh, with innocence, innocence is virtue, but it, it renders you vulnerable. Uh, religion and education uh, can be both uh, free and restrictive at the same time. Um, Blake's idea of a, a complete vision of life, it was encompassed by contrary ideas. Think of the lamb and the lion, both representative of Christ, but both uh, showing different uh, facets of the concept of Christ. Uh, the idea of heaven and hell. Uh, maybe the tiger, something that can be absolutely ferocious, but also uh, powerful and beautiful. If we have a look at the divine image, the poem poem itself uh, we noticed in this first stanza the abstract negative symbols um, cruelty jealousy terror and secrecy um, all of these are abstract ideas they don't actually exist until we as humans make them exist um, it's human that creates terror it's humans that create secrecy jealousy and cruelty and these are very much uh, symbols of human fallibility these are negative aspects of uh, the human idea now notice he uh, uh, similarly to uh, the human abstract uh, he anthropomorphizes uh, the human and considers the idea that uh, the human dress is forged iron iron the human form is a fiery forge the human face is a furnace sealed the human heart is hungry gorge there's some lovely uh, alliterative forged fiery furnace uh, form uh, quite an even though they're soft it's a soft sound there's, there's a sense sinister sense of uh, perhaps anger there uh, notice that all of the uh, all of the ideas the an anthropomorphism um, Forged iron, forged iron, fiery forge, furnace sealed. Uh, these are things that are, and, uh, that are created, they're built, they're made. Okay, so it's suggesting that all of these things within the humans, they're made. It's not something that we're innately born with. Um, so, uh, it, yeah, it's not an, in, in, an innate uh, thing within us. It's uh, the, These are uh, kind of feelings that uh, that are created by certain conditions and they leave us uh, with our heart being the hungry gorge showing perhaps that sense of greed within us so why has he written this what does this what does this kind of show what's what's why conclusive uh, I, I, I wonder whether he is saying um, without these without the contraries in life without the the kind of the two two conditions um if we have a pure world of experience um it renders humans uh in a in a very negative light uh, you know a world based on experience is can only be destructive um uh but note the language the language is really based on the uh kind of the uh, industrialization uh, maybe the excess excesses of, of greedy capitalism that was uh, inherent during uh, Blake's time in Blake's London so why an image divine then well if we consider uh, and this is the last thing we'll consider with Blake um, a lot of Blake's idea ideas uh, kind of encapsulate the idea that God is in a human form and I suppose if if that is true is this the God that we want to win it uh, want to envisage cruel jealous one full of terror and secrecy probably no probably not that's the God 
of the, the fallen God. Uh, what we want is is Blake's God, the kind, the um, the free, uh, the nurturing. So a divine image uh, is is this how we want to be viewed? And this is the world, and this is the human who is. Uh, a human resulting from the world of experience only.